Paper cutting demos, we miss those. <laughs> I know, because you're sending me messages asking why I don't do them anymore. And I'm here to tell you that uh, they're purely for entertainment, and I love them. And I've done plenty of you know cut tests and stuff, and not just paper, I've cut power cord, I've cut you know into wood a little bit, uh, cardboard, all kinds of stuff, you know, the uh, zip ties. But it's purely entertainment. It doesn't give you specific information about this knife as a whole, it will give you information about the specific knife that I'm holding in my hand at the time in this filming. So it's misleading, and I don't like giving misleading information. For example, if I do a knife review and I take a piece of paper and I cut the paper and it's a nice clean slice, and I take it a step further and maybe I take some newsprint and cleanly slice to that, it's amazing. Wow, awesome, cool. So what happens? You want to go get that knife and you get it and take it out of the box and you try the same thing and maybe it doesn't work for you. It's because there's variables. There's slight inconsistencies with factory edges, all right? These aren't, you know, custom hand ground knives or anything. There's the quality control on a lot of different companies is very good. But no matter how good they are, machines make these things. Occasionally there's some kind of a hiccup and you might not get one that's quite as sharp as the one before it on the same assembly line. You know, it's just how it works. So although very entertaining, it's not very informative, so I don't do them as often. So to get that out of the way, because I'm very excited to be reviewing this knife. This is the CRKT Foresight, and I am in love with this knife. I am, not physically, but I really, really like it a lot. <laughs> I've showed this in uh, some other videos, and um, I gave like a, uh, I did a video opening up, showing the internals. I did, I believe I did like a first impressions video at the beach, because I went to pick this up when I first got it in the mail. I was so excited, I couldn't even get home. I was riding my bike home. And I stopped at the beach to, uh, to open it up and, and show you guys because I was so impressed with it. And it continues to impress me every single time I get it in my hands. There's so much to like about this knife. And I'm going out on a limb here because I've had a lot of different uh, CRKT knives before. And I've loved a lot of different models for a lot of different reasons. But I can easily say that this is my favorite Columbia River Knife and Tool model I've ever had. Period. If you like the company, if you like the brand, you like what they put out, um... This is one to own. This is one to get your hands on and check out. Uh, it has a lot to offer. It's a Ken Onion design. Okay, you can see a lot of his normal influences. Um, you know, the heavy recurve on the blade. Some of his design stuff is very um, fluent. It's, it's very consistent, all right? When you look at a Ken Onion knife, you know it's a Ken Onion knife because he has a certain style, as do a lot of different knife makers. Uh, and although he does different things like other knife makers, he has this overall feel. So right when, I mean, if you know a little bit about uh, Ken Onion's work before, you know, you see him in, in other models and stuff, you will pick that up right away when looking at this one. And just in case you don't, there's his name on the back <laughs> to remind you. But um, really interesting design. I mean, right off the bat, functionality out the window, price out the window, um, you know, everything about it completely out the window and just going by visuals, it's a very cool looking knife. I think it's extremely sexy. It's got nice lines to it. Um, it's aggressive looking. It's big. It's chunky. It's beefy. But it has all the elegance that you want in a folder. It's smooth. It's fast. It's strong. It's lockup is amazing. So, I mean, it just has so much to offer. So, anyway, let's get into some specs, get those out of the way because there's a lot I want to talk about in this review. I try not to make my videos too long, but you know, nothing's planned. I just turn the camera on and, and go with it. So anyway, um, it is, it's a larger knife. You can see open here, it's uh, 8.69 inches. All right, closed 5.17 inches. Okay, 6.3 ounces on this one. We have the uh, uh, aluminum scales for the handle. You don't have full liners on the inside. Of course, it's a liner locking knife. So the one side you do have like a liner insert. You can refer to my, uh, my video where I, sh I take this knife apart and show the internals. But you can see the plate on the inside there, the general design. So although we're not rocking like full, full lined uh, uh, folder here, it's completely metal. It's all metal. I mean, that's what I like about this thing. It's got the heft and it's got that, that sturdiness that I really want in a large folder. Very cool. If you're worried about weight, this one's not for you. Cross it off your list. It's a heavy knife. 6.3 ounces is not lightweight. 
but uh, I think it's offering a lot for that weight. Anyway, um, overall, the, I mean, like I said, visually, it's very appealing. I like the four finger uh, choil design on this one. I like it is a flipper design, which I really like. I, I've been such a thumb stud guy most of my knife career, if you can call that my knife career, <laughs> since I've gotten into knives, I've always been a thumb stud guy. Um, but in the last probably three or four years, a lot of knives are using the flipper design. It's cleaner, sleeker. Obviously, it's fast, easy to deploy. People who want these, um, you know, fast opening knives, they want automatic knives, they want speed assist knives, but they don't want the uh, the hassle you get with the legalities. You know, not particularly speed assist as much as we're talking about fully automatic knives. But you know, the days of I want the knife where I push a button and comes out real fast, they're way gone. They're still cool. I love automatic knives. But with the technology we have and the different designs we have today, something as simple as a flipper in combination, in this case, with the IKBS system, the uh, Acoma um, Corth Bearing System, that's what that stands for, not to be confused with uh, IBS, Irritable Bowel Syndrome. You don't want that. You want IKBS, not IBS. Just remember that. That's important. So when you go to the store, don't ask for IBS. Anyway. <laughs> um, Super smooth, super fast. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Really, really cool. But uh, this knife has so much to offer. But hands down, looks alone, I think it's just awesome. It's really, really cool. I definitely prefer the plain edge version. There is a serrated uh, or combo edge version in this knife. But uh, plain, plain edge all the way for me on this one. Um, what you will notice in this knife, particularly when you look at the spine, is that it's completely smooth. There's no jimping. Now, a lot of people are going to scratch their heads and go, ah, oh, you know what, I really like this, but now that I know it has no jimping on it, eh, not for me. Well, I would suggest you get one of these in your hand, because although the handle scales are completely smooth, there's no texture on this. This is smooth aluminum, okay? Obviously, there's grooves cut in here, but it's smooth to the touch. There's no jimping on the spine. There's no jimping over here at the base, you know, where it's going to go into your palm. Um... The spine of the blade has no jimping, no thumb ramps or anything. And in fact, the spine is actually rounded, which I, I really hope that one day every folding knife has that. It's such a simple, unique feature, and I love it. When you're bearing down the blade, it adds so much comfort. It adds just, just a touch of classiness. You know, when you think about it, look at most of your folders. You don't have a rounded spine. It's another step. It's another process in making the knife, and it just adds something to it. It's really, really cool. And to me, it makes the knife seem even more, more elegant and more expensive than it really is. But just, just awesome. But yeah, you'll notice it's so smooth, right? Even though it's so smooth, this has to be one of the most comfortable grips and most secure grips I've ever had in a folding knife, period. Hands down. All right, this one just happens to fit my fingers perfectly. But these, these finger choils, they feel great. They're deep, okay? In addition to having the deeper first finger choil, and of course the flipper design acting as a guard, as most of them do, once the knife's opened, it extends that piece there. All right, so you really have kind of a half moon shape here. It just fits amazingly, okay? Now you do have a slight curvature up here. It's not one of these crazy deep thumb ramps so that your thumb doesn't ride up and all that kind of jazz. But what I've noticed is that they have actually um, uh, cutouts on the interior. You see how this handle comes up? There's a thin channel here, then it widens, it flares out on both sides. It's because of the cutout in the aluminum. And what this allows is that the meat of your thumb, the flesh, to actually rest inside the frame. So with just the very slight curvature here, the fact that those cutouts are there, it just, it feels amazing. I'm telling you, this is one of those knives you have to get in your hand once, all right? Once you feel this, you'll get it. You'll understand. Ergos are phenomenal. The lockup, it's a liner lock, okay? Liner locks are very tricky. Sometimes they're hit and miss. With this one, even with a lot of use, it locks up like a bank vault. There's nothing. There's no side to side. There's no up and down. You can do the whole circle things. You can sit here and do hand dances all day long and you're not gonna get any wiggle out of it. It's phenomenal. Look at the blade centering. Could be a little bit more centered. Doesn't bother me though, because it doesn't rub. See, it is to the one side here. Now, that might bother some people that it's close, but I can promise it's not touching. There is a tinine coating on here, or titanium nitride, that's what you're giving this black blade. And of course, if it was rubbing, you'd see some more wear marks on that. 
Might be an issue for you. You could adjust the pivot a little bit, but I'm not gonna mess with this one, particularly because it locks up perfectly. Don't wanna mess with it. Um, the pocket clip. This is something that I showed, and for a lot of people, this is a turnoff. I understand it. There's certain things you want in your knives. Certain, you go down like a, a mental checklist. Is it cool looking? Check, okay. Uh, is it a frame lock? Because I like that, or yes, no, whatever. I like lockbacks, I like line locks. We all have our own individual wants in a knife, right? For a lot of people, the big deal is they want the option for your knife to be tip up or tip down, okay? And if they don't have the option to swap, they want at least the, uh, the tip up. It's very common to want a right-handed tip up carry. This one does not offer that. This only offers a right-handed tip down carry. For a lot of people, that's gonna turn you off. I understand that. Uh, on top of that, the pocket clip design turned off a lot of people initially. I understand that too. If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. That's cool, that's okay. As you can see how this one works, uh, it's very uh, short, but stout. It wraps around, actually attaches on the inside of the frame. You can remove it, there's two screws in there. As I showed uh, opening the, uh, the knife up, you can see the internals. You do have to take the knife apart to remove the pocket clip. Again, some things people don't like. Uh, initially, I had no problem with it, and after using it all this time, I can honestly say I still have no problem with it. Although I am still the guy who prefers the tip-up carry, this one carries fine. It carries beautifully. The pocket clip works great, and more importantly, it stays out of the way. All right, With this particular knife being chunky the way it is, I think if they gave you a pocket clip more traditionally, you know, in the sense of, um, you know, a more traditional style pocket clip, and particularly if you wanted a... Uh, um, a tip up carry on this knife because of the design and the grooves on the handle it would make it uncomfortable okay when I hold this knife I don't feel the pocket clip you see the positioning here I don't feel it have you ever taken your favorite knife that you like to hold now take the pocket clip off of it it makes a world of a difference we're so used to in most of our folders actually gripping our pocket clip the pocket clips up against our hand or maybe it's up against our finger depending on the positioning that it's attached uh, to the knife but take one of your favorite knives that you don't normally do and take the pocket clip completely off. Most folding knives feel much more comfortable without a pocket clip. But we don't do that because we want to have it clipped to our pocket, right? We don't want to accept, okay, well, I'll take it off and I'll put a lantern on or something or I'll leave it in my pocket to move around. Most of us don't like that. Most of us prefer having it clipped to our pocket. So we just deal with it. We don't know any different. But I'm telling you, when you don't feel the pocket clip on your knife, it feels amazing. It feels like a really nice fixed blade. All right, there's no interference there. It just it's pure grip. It really is awesome. So I I I like it. I don't honestly don't like the looks of it. I think that it's such an awesome knife. And when I turn it around, I go, wah, 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 what's that little worm sticking out of my knife? But you know what? As far as function, spot on. It's perfect. And I really think this is the only way they could have went with a pocket clip on this particular knife because of the grooves they have in the handle. So I get it. I see the overall picture here. But as far as comfort, hands down one of the most comfortable folders I've ever had in my life. And that's saying a lot. I've literally have held thousands and thousands of knives. So that is saying quite a bit. I like it. It's kind of old 80s style. A lot of the old, you know, fighting knives, the fantasy knives, they had the full four finger choil. But uh, it's functional. It works great. It does offer a lot of grip on here. A lot of you guys are used to like the um, double, excuse me, double choil knives where you can have a grip down here. Then you can also choke up. A lot of these newer knives these days have like a, you know, the Ricasso of the blade has a, uh, like an unsharpened portion so you can choke high up on it, you know, to get in close. This doesn't have that. And being that it's a larger blade, that is something you lack with this. All right, so if you're one of those people that like to choke up on your blade like this, you can. I wouldn't because you're getting way too close to that edge. It's not purposely meant for this kind of, a, this kind of work. Of course, with this particular knife, you can hold it up here. That's not a problem if you want to get in close to do something, but um, just something to consider there. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the bearing system in here, IKBS, it just makes this knife so smooth. It's so buttery and silky. It's absolutely ridiculous. If you look here with no wrist movement at all, sometimes with flippers, depending on the, the tension on the pivot, or, you know, it can be a little bit hard. Sometimes you need a little bit of a, fl a wrist flick. Watch my arm. It's all in your pointer finger. All you're doing is that. That's all you need. It's so smooth, and there's the perfect detent on this. All right, this is important with flipping knives, in my opinion. You want the just the right tension. See as I close this knife, right at the end where it sucks in, it's because the detent is falling into place. 
And what that does for you is it builds up a little bit of a tension. When you first push this down, if you had no detent, when you barely touched it, it would start opening, right? You don't want that. You want to build a little tension so that when it releases, it forces all that at once, okay? What this offers for you is if there was no detent at all, you'd have to really push down hard and fast to get that blade to open right. But instead, you have a very minimal movement here with your finger. It's just so smooth, and like I said, it, it locks up like a bank ball. It's fantastic, I really love it. Blade design in this is really cool. You have a lot of belly. This thing is a slicing beast, okay? Having a recurve in this blade, there's certainly pros on performance. The, the con is sharpening, okay? If you're sharpening on traditional bench stone or something, having the curvature in the blade is gonna be a little bit more difficult. Not a huge deal though. Of course, you can use the, the corner of your stone to get into the, uh, uh, the base here in the blade if you needed to. That's a sharpening technique for a separate video, but if you had a rod system, not an issue whatsoever. But what this offers you is you when you have a recurve in your blade, okay, and your blade actually goes up a little bit and then dips back down, when you start cutting something at the heel of your blade, without tilting your hand or your arm, as you're cutting, it's forcing the material you're cutting into that blade, okay? So it's a much more aggressive cutter. This thing is an awesome slicer, still has a nice acute point on it, nothing crazy, it's not a needle nose, but that'll also, uh, you're gonna gain some strength in there having a wider point, but still nice and pointy. Comes razor sharp out of the box, no issues with there at all. Okay, the blade steel is an AUS-8. Um, you know, people have good experience with it, people have bad experience with it. I feel that uh, the CRKT, their specific heat treat or their specific source for AUS-8 stainless is, uh, is very good. Um, on par with pretty much every other company out there. There's only one company that I think is subpar and I'm not gonna talk about it in this review, but there's a specific company out there that their specific AUS-8 just tends to not hold an edge like everyone else's, but definitely uh, you know, a manageable blade. You can see I have not, I, I, uh, I've not stropped this knife since I've had it, which, I, which is against my policy. I like to strop them up. But I did that specifically because I want to show you that there's somewhat of a polish as I kind of get the glare of the lamp overhead, the lights overhead. You could see that glistening right here. All right. That's from factory. That's not me. I didn't polish this edge. It just comes with a slightly more polished edge from factory. So, of course, that, that glisten and shine with the all black knife just makes for a really cool looking blade. Um, yes, very purposeful, wide, heavy, beefy blade. And I love it. Of course, this one says first production run or just first production. It's not going to make a difference on performance at all. Um, as far as collectability, I like all the CRKTs. They're not specifically that collectible. There's no, nothing wrong with that. These are user knives, you know? And um, if you're into collectible knives, there's other ones you can get for collections. But these are definitely knives you want to buy and be able to use. And uh, this one's been fantastic to actually use. I just, I love it. It's so cool. There is a uh, lanyard hole in the bottom. I have not used it. If you do find that you just cannot stand this clip, just the looks of it, because functionally it's perfect. But if you're just like, nope, I can't deal with it, don't like it at all, that's fine, remove it, throw yourself on a nice lanyard. The knife's big and beefy enough where you can keep this in the pocket, it'll keep sturdy, have your lanyard hanging out of the outside of your pocket. That's all we need to uh, access your knife. Just easily grab your lanyard and pull it right out. There you go. But uh, one of the biggest features to that pocket clip, like I said, the advantage in my opinion is that when the knife's open, you don't feel it, and that is huge to me. That is something I don't get with most other folding knives. And I am the guy who likes it clipped in my pocket. I don't want it floating in my pocket. I have slip joints for that. I've carried that way. I've carried every way under the sun. And I definitely prefer having a simple knife clipped to the inside of my front right pocket on my pants or shorts, whatever I happen to be wearing. It's just always there. It's simple. It's easy. I don't have to dig into my pants. It's not flopping around. It doesn't go sideways. One of the, the worst things I, I can't stand is if you have a knife that's in your pocket, it's not clipped. It's just loosely in your pocket. And it just ends up twisting and going sideways and like bulging or poking out the side of your pocket. I hate that. So when I do carry loosely uh, in the pocket, usually they're smaller knives, you know, some different Victorinox stuff and some different slip joints. And so that they can fold around a little bit and they're not so cumbersome or poking, you know, obviously poking out. But anyway, um, the price on these across the board is about 90 bucks. Um, I saw them as, as, well, as low as like 82 and as high as like 105 or 110. Um, they're getting harder to find. Most of the places that I've, uh, I've looked, they're selling out. And for good reason, because people are actually getting these in their hand 
liking them and going out and buying seconds and thirds for themselves to keep. Like I said, I'm going out on a limb here, but this has to be my favorite Columbia River knife and tool folding knife I've ever owned. And I've had most, <laughs> most of their models. Unlike other companies, uh, you know, I've had a lot of CRKTs and uh, this is my favorite. So can't say enough about them. It's just, it's fantastic. It looks cool, it's functional, locks great, performs great. The hollow ground blade has a nice recurve in it. It's just an all around awesome knife. So I would highly recommend getting one in your hand. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed with it. So that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon uh, with some new videos. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Take care.